if you want. Hi everybody. I uh, I went out and got. I had to I had to pay the internet bill and I I was having a pretty good day. I think I'm gonna fade pretty quick because I was on my feet a little bit, and uh, so I'm gonna get this done, and then I will. Uh, I'll basically try and get everything done. I'll try and be as coherent. I'm I'm already feeling it a little bit, but I I had at least two weeks. Patches, I'm trying to do a stream. I need you to be a good girl for me, okay? I might not be able to play too much. I have a uh, I have a little sweet little pet that would like some attention. Yeah, she oh you such a sweet girl, and. Uh, I had like shit videos for like two weeks and there's actually some good ones now. Like yesterday I had a really good one to watch. Today was a good one. Um, there was a video and I'll see if I can tell you it so you can go watch it yourself. I'll do it as much justice as I can. Um, the channel on YouTube is Dom Burgess, B-U-R-G-E-S-S. And the title is The Stanford Professor Who Says Aliens Are 100% on Earth. The guy's name is Gary Nolan. And I want to be clear. If you're going to get sick, please don't do it while you're sitting on me. I just washed these shorts. Yeah, if you got to get sick, just do it somewhere not on me and I'll, I'll happily wipe it up. Yeah. I sometimes think she does this on purpose when she's not getting enough attention. Yeah. Because there, there's a lot of times in the morning if I'm not getting up fast enough, it, it, see, it, feel, it just sounds like she's dry heaving until she pukes. And then when I tell her if you get sick, you're going to have to wait, let your stomach calm down. Well, then she usually stops. So, But like, she isn't getting enough attention, so she starts looking a certain way and then I think she's gonna puke but uh the scary Nolan guy he's a Stanford professor and he's in the medical department like how he I would say he's the Stanford version of Avi Loeb um Avi Loeb is think is he's in charge of the I know more about Avi Loeb and uh Gary Nolan, I really don't know a lot about. So, you, like, some of the stuff I'm telling you where he is a Stanford professor, that I believe is a fact. I, I don't... Um, now there, But there's some stuff, and you just got to take it as an opinion. Maybe don't put too much weight to it. I, I don't know. Um, I redid this yesterday. And then... Uh, this guy was asked, it was an interview, and he was asked about the, you know, what, how much likelihood he thought that UFOs had visited Earth. And he said that he didn't really like the premise of the question. He said, aliens are here. And he said they walked among us. And he goes, and they've been here for a really long time. And he said, I would say there is 100% certainty of this. And... Again, I think what I'm telling you here is factual. He started out, I think, as a debunker. And uh, he, uh, he started out as a debunker. And at some point, he claims, and I don't doubt him on this. I, I, he comes off to me as a very credible person. Um, I would say he comes off at least, if not more, uh credible than Avi Loeb and I think Avi Loeb is credible I, I take him at least if not more serious than Avi Loeb um, and I take both of them and, and again I don't mean this in a bad way it's just an opinion don't put a lot of weight on it I take both of them as more credible as like uh, Jeremy Corbell and I think I, I think Jeremy Corbell is is believable but the thing with Corbell is when you see him he, his personality, he, he, you know, he kind of makes me think of the big Lebowski, but when you listen to him, and I, I've had this, I've had this with other people away from the UFO thing, you get these people that, you know, and, and this isn't Corbell, that they, they speak with a bonics or they're like me. They don't write for a living. They're not a professional writer, writer, or they're worse than me. 
And so you got to kind of grade it on a curve. But when you actually pay attention to what they're saying, the ideas coming out of their head, they, they, they're very, very insightful. They have very good, credible information. And you can just get over this prejudice that everybody has to be a fucking English professor for them to have credibility. And, uh, but no, he, he strikes me as a very credible person. I can't fault him on that. Um, and then he basically said that the government came to him and wanted him to, uh, analyze evidence. And he said like one of the, the thing he was talking about, he's like, well, they, like one of the first things they brought me, it was like magnesium, I think he said, and it had the wrong isotopes. And my, my understanding, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but my understanding is the isotopes tell you what planet it was made on. So, like, if it's made on Earth, it would have a certain isotope ratio, and, and these were off. And he said, he goes, now, it's possible to get a different isotope ratio. He goes, it's absolutely possible, but he goes, it's expensive. And he goes, there's absolutely no reason to do it. You know, it doesn't change anything. It just makes it look like it came from another planet. And, and then he, and I don't know if the government put this up to him or if he did it, but he started, he said, and this is from him. He started examining bodies of people that supposedly had alien encounters and he said that you know you you didn't even have to be a doctor to look at these MRI findings and see that there was something wrong with it and you know so that you know the again the guy seems really credible he does the thing that gets me is and I've never met any of them it's all been from like interviews and stuff like that. But he basically said that aliens walk among us. He's saying that. He's saying it's a hundred percent certainty. And when I look at him, there is something about his mannerism. There's something about his mannerism that strikes me as off. I can't explain it. Uh, you make your own. And again, whatever you do, don't let my opinion, don't let my, you know, mental disorder or whatever the fuck it is. Don't let it change your mind. You know, if you didn't see it before and, and if you go there now, understand that I might've put that in your head. I, I'm really not trying to, cause I, I don't know. I literally don't know. I'm not trying to poison the well on this guy. I really don't know anything about him. But, uh, Oh, shit. I'm out of sticks. But he does. He just, it strikes me as off. If that makes any sense to people. One, two, three. And what I wonder is, after after hearing, because this is the one that, like, where, I don't, I don't think I've seen this before. If I have, I don't remember it. But like with him saying that it's a hundred percent certainty that they they they've been here for a while and they walk among us, and I've also heard I don't know if it was him, but I've heard people say that some of these aliens that are here, um, if they were walking down the street, you'd never be able to tell they look so much like us. Well, maybe he's one of them. Yeah, and I really don't know. I am I'm not trying to fucking bash anybody. I really don't know. But like I said, there's something about him that just doesn't seem right. So I kind of wonder. But yeah, there was that. And uh, I found that very, very fascinating. And then the other thing I'll add on. But again, that, that's kind of what he said. You know, and there, that, that if you want, go check out Dom Burgess, B-U-R-G-E-S-S and D-O-M. And the Stanford professor who says aliens are 100% on Earth. Make up your own mind. Please do not judge this based on me. Um, make up your own mind. But I just, I just wonder. I just absolutely wonder. Yeah, I did some. Some of this was done before, but I was doing this yesterday, kind of working on the path. 
I uh, I expanded that uh, expanded that pumpkin patch too. Okay, one, two, three, and four. And then the other thing is, and I I really got to treat these guys with a grain of salt, but uh, it's, it's the hill, the hills, the, the YouTube channel, and then it's UAP investigation stalled wall, stonewalled by congressional leaders. And uh, um, that one there I started watching. I, the only reason I don't, I, I, I kind of find it funny because, and I'm not saying it isn't sometimes well-deserved, but they have been really, really good on the UFO coverage. They have. And then I see them pushing uh, Robert, Down, or, uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s presidential bid. And... This is a guy who I, th and I'm not 100% sure, this is a guy that I think has denied the Holocaust. He has come out and said that COVID was uh, engineered to affect white people and black people and to leave Jews and Chinese people. I mean, he's just come up with some crazy shit. COVID has really fucked him over. It, it really has. And they're really pushing him. And they're also pushing, and again, she seems like a nice person. I'm, I'm really not trying to bet. She seems like a really nice person. But they're pushing this woman who thinks you can pray away hurricanes. And I'm, I'm sorry, they're probably flat earthers and anti-vaxxers too. I mean, the, the people pushing this shit on the show. I, I'm like, oh my God, at a certain point, you know, at a, at a certain point, you know, enough's enough. You you know, this, this shit's just crazy. And, uh, but they, they did a video, and again, I, I am putting a lot less emphasis on it than I would have, say, maybe a couple weeks ago before I saw some of their presidential coverage. It's like, oh, my God. I used to think, because Crystal Ball was on there, I think, when the Hill started up. They had her on her. And I honestly figured, because I, I basically watched some of this. That's how it's in my feed. I watched it because she was on it. Because, you know, sometimes I think she went a little too far left for the most part. I thought she had a pretty good mind on stuff, and she was very, very attractive. So it was like a win-win for me to kind of watch her shit. And I figured they got rid of her because she was too far left. That was honestly my assumption. It really was. Well, then I saw this shit. I'm like, oh, my God, maybe they got rid of her because she was too fucking moderate. I don't know. And uh, so that this stuff kind of bothers me a little bit. <coughs> but they showed an interview of uh, Representative Tim Burchett from Tennessee. And I, I think he's, I don't even know. I, he seems like a nice guy. He really does. But I got a feeling on probably 99.9% .9 of things I'm going to disagree with the guy but on the UFO stuff, he seems to have been rock solid. He really has. And that Matt Gates, I think he's a pedophile. They, uh, that's my opinion. But he, uh, he really appears to have been trafficking in, in young girls. Uh, he's just a horrible person. And uh, he's actually seeming, I mean, you know, I, I, I'd really rather not. I don't care how good he is on this. I don't care if he was actually going to get to the bottom of it and get us disclosure. Um, what he's, what he looks to have done with kids. I don't want him, I don't want him anywhere near anything important. I don't think he should be in Congress. I don't think he should be walking around free. I think, I think he should be in jail for the shit that they've shown him to be doing. And I don't get a vote on that though. And, uh, but he's even taken this pretty seriously. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, but when you've got these, far-right Republicans and Kinko, the child molesting clown from Florida on their, you know, like coming together on this, like, this is pretty serious. You know, it really is. And uh, I'm going to do what I can. I'm going to go ahead and end the stream. I just wanted to get something done today because I saw that video. It was really, really good. 
and I will try to find another one for tomorrow. But I am going to call it a day. I'm going to get off of here. And I'm going to really take it easy the rest of the day. I'm going to try and get to sleep early. If I have to, I'll go lay down before I pass out again. I, I, gotta, I can feel it coming on. But uh, I, if I can, I need to go to an appointment tomorrow. I would, I would really like to get on disability. I don't, I don't know if they're going to. I think the deck's stacked against me anyways. But like I said, if I, I think if I was a drug addict or if I had like eight kids I couldn't feed, I think I'd have disability. But I think the Republicans in state and out of state have fucked things up so much. Um, you know, they're like, you've got Republicans that have said if a person can't work, he shouldn't eat. And I and I'm not blaming anybody in the Democratic Party. I'm not blaming anybody that we voted for. You know, the the people I didn't vote for. You know, I think I think are behind this. You know, as a movement. But. Uh, I'm going to try and make it tomorrow. If not, I'm probably going to get denied. I don't think I'm going to have the energy to go through it again. The fucking bullshit with the paperwork and everything else. I I, I did my valiant bit. Uh, the, again, the call to action. Get a hold of your elected officials and ask them to legalize assisted suicide. Um, maybe, maybe they'll do it. Maybe I'll get some help. Um... Maybe not. Um, maybe it will bring up a debate on the gun issue and get some gun changes made so we stop seeing kids getting killed in school. And who knows? I, I don't think it, I, even if they started the day with good effort, I don't think it would be quick enough, you know, to help me out. And by that, I mean like, you know, two to five years. But maybe this will spark something down the road where people like Senator Sanders and, and others like him, where they can get them to lower the retirement age, they can get them to raise benefits, maybe they can get them to uh, fix, fix your benefits if you're elderly or disabled. Maybe, maybe they can do something to fix it. I don't know. And... Uh, you know, and again, maybe it won't help me, but maybe it'll help the greater good going forward. So just please consider doing that. And I hope everybody has a really good day.